Hey runners, today you will learn how to overcome the most common running injury that plagues most beginners and some experienced runners. And that is what we call runner's knee. Um, I have a real runner uh, just like you and who was able to not only overcome this stubborn achy knee pain every time she ran, but was able to go on to getting a personal best in her second ever half marathon. Um, this knee pain is by far the greatest reason most runners don't stick with running because they try to take up running and then they get this pain and then it just doesn't go away with the standard rest, ice, don't run philosophy. You've been told by traditional medical practitioners and you will search on Google about. Um, so I'm super excited to bring her on. Lindsay, what is going on? Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to share your story with our healthy runner community. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to it. I am looking forward to this as well, um, because you're going to provide some inspiration for others that might be battling um, this common injury. So if you are a runner who gets achy knee pain when you run up hills, when you go downstairs, when you squat, um, you go to get up out of a chair after you've been sitting at your desk for a couple of hours and you feel this pain. Um, in the front of your knee. If you're a runner who's been frustrated in the past that whenever you try to increase your speed or increase your distance, you just get injured, frustrated, and you're not able to run. Um, you may be starting out reading about runner's knee and thought you should just do the ice rest, stop running and do some stretches. Um, this all sounds great. And you even feel a little better in the short term, but the problem is when you start running again and building up your long runs, that same pain comes back. And now you're just running through it because you don't want to stop again. Right? So now just imagine being able to run pain-free and get back to running more miles than you ever thought you could. If I just described you, then you'll want to stick around to hear Lindsay's story and how she overcame runner's knee um, and was able to get a PR in our half marathon. Um, these fears and obstacles can be overcome. And Lindsay is just one of our spark winners um, from our Healthy Runner Coaching Program, who has just accomplished some amazing things in her running, and she's continuing to grow as a runner. And I just needed to bring her on the podcast to share with you um, in case you are struggling with a similar issue. Uh, so Lindsay, you've listened to many podcast episodes before. You know how we do this. We start a little dynamic warm up. Uh, the first question uh, that we ask all our guests. Uh, so tell uh, the folks who are listening, you know, where are you from and what do you currently do? Yeah. So Lindsay Ratcliffe, I'm a 44 year old runner and I live in San Antonio, Texas. And I am a university professor. I teach writing. I've taught writing at the university level for 17 years. Um, and I'm also a PhD candidate in environmental studies. So I'm working on writing my dissertation now and it's getting very close to the end. So yes, that is, that's me in a nutshell. And a novice runner, I should say an adult onset runner because I love when you say that because it describes me to a T. <laughs> oh, I love that. And yeah, kudos to you for coming down to the end in your home stretch in your PhD journey. Um, and it, it's weird as you're finishing up one journey, right? The whole PhD thing, you're starting another journey in your running um, life. And what I love about you is that you are a lifelong uh, learner, as well as, you know, wanting to become a lifelong runner. So yeah. I just love that you just kind of want to learn like best practices on how to continually improve um, in your running. And I, I just loved uh, for those that don't know, um, which you, I don't know how you would know unless you were in our healthy runner community, but uh, Lindsay and I were working together um, online, right? I'm in Connecticut. She's in San Antonio, but my national conference was in San Antonio. So I had the pleasure of actually meeting Lindsay in person. And we actually did one of our coaching calls in person, uh, right in my hotel lobby. So that was super cool that we've actually met in person and not only on Zoom screen. <laughs> That was icing on the cake. Yeah, because, you know, the actually the online coaching is super high touch, super engaged. Like we communicate a lot. We do deep dive calls, but really just to see you in person in my city was so cool just to sit at a table face to face. And, you know, it was a little um, extra, just an extra treat for sure. 
Yeah, it was a treat for me as well. And I enjoyed my time in San Antonio and had some nice runs along the river walk there. So it was a, the city treated me well. I had really good weather and then we had really cold weather. So it was kind of like extremes, but you, you were saying that's the Texas weather, right? Yes. Texas is all about extremes. Yeah. I was just, uh, before we started, I was just talking about how we've had a triple digit, like five or six triple digit days already, which for me is kind of a little out of the ordinary. Um, so you know, I guess we need to predict, uh, we need to kind of prepare for more extremes in the future. And certainly uh, running through extreme heat is going to be probably a part of my journey too. So <laughs> absolutely. Uh, extreme heat is definitely one of the hardest things to run through. So there are definitely some big safety points. And then, you know, some big things in terms of expectations yes. on, you know, what your running is going to look like in that heat. Um, so let's get into kind of diving into the situation you were in kind of before you started working with us and, you know, some of the, the struggles that you were facing, um, just kind of paint that picture for us. How long were you actually running before you started feeling, um, some knee pain with running? Yeah. So I really started running in earnest. I think like a lot of people did in 2020 because my gym shut down. Right. And so, yep. I had been a devoted CrossFitter for five years. Um, and, you know, my husband and I were really, you know, trying to do the workouts at home and kind of program workouts at home. And we got through about six months. And uh, then, you know, I just kind of started to lean toward the, the running heavy uh, CrossFit workout. So maybe yeah, I'd swing a kettlebell a little bit, but then I really wanted to go running, you know, so um, I kind of transitioned into running exclusively in the fall of 2020. So, um, by the time I, um, I met up with you, I think I'd been running maybe for like a year and a half in earnest. Um, and things were going well at first. Like I was highly motivated. You know, I was running four to five days a week. I love the way it made me feel. It was a huge part of my physical health health and really my mental health, just like coping with all the stress during the pandemic, you know, family stress, job stress, all of those things that really just intensified um, during COVID. It was a way to release that tension, be out in nature, right? All those benefits. Um, and, you know, I was good at sticking to a plan. You know, I was, I've always been, you know, very goal oriented. And so like a good student, I followed those pre-programmed training plans on my running watch. You know, they all come loaded on the nice running watches. Um, and I used that watch to train for my first virtual 10K. That was mm -hmm. great. And then I used it to train for my first half marathon in 2021. Um, and while the 10K went great, uh, the training during the, the half marathon training, uh, things started not to go well. And that's when the knee pain really cropped up. So I'd started to develop um, recurring knee pain, like you said, just kind of general achy, diffuse knee pain, kind of like all around the kneecap area, just in the one knee. It would happen like at least once a week and, you know, all throughout the fall. And certainly anytime that I tried to run more than about three miles, it would happen. I would just get that general pain and it would set in mid run and just sort of slowly intensify through the end of the run. And on the worst days, you know, it would actually stick around after the run, maybe even for a day or two after. Um, and like a lot of new runners, um, I made a huge training error in training for my first marathon by signing up for a highly technical 15 K trail race, just three weeks before my first half marathon. Um, because you know, it was at a park that I loved. It was benefiting an awesome cause. My friend was doing it with me. What could go wrong? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, at mile three of that 15K trail race, uh, my knee let me know exactly what was wrong with that plan. And for 80% of the race, I was in pain um, and really like truly bad, like stiff. And I was limping afterward. And for days after that race, I just, my, I was stiff and my knee just did not want to bend. Um, so, yeah, so it was flared up after that race. And that's kind of common yeah. when you have this condition, there's like a acute flare up where, you know, a lot of runners I work with kind of describe that same way where it's that stiffness, really hard to bend it. Um, so that, you know, tells me like it was highly irritable, like 
there's probably some inflammation going on in the cartilage and like the undersurface of your kneecap there. Um, okay. I made it really angry. And so, yeah, so I was three weeks out from this, this half marathon in December when that happened. So that was a definitely a suboptimal situation for going into your first uh, half marathon. Um, and actually, you know, it went okay. I was back on the roads. I wasn't on trails. So um, about eight and a half miles in, I was good. And then the runner sneak came back and I was in pretty good amount of pain by the, by the end of the 13.1. Um, and then I just got really frustrated. I got, um, I didn't really understand why I was not getting better. Right. Because like, you know, a good student, again, I got on to, you know, I remembered what I'd been taught in my phys ed classes about the rice method, right. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. I got one of those fancy, um, uh, ice packs that wraps all around your knee. So after every run, I would go to the freezer, open it up. I would put the, you know, compression uh, ice on my leg and I would throw it over the back of the couch. And my husband's like, oh, another great run, huh? You know, um, <laughs> he's like, really yeah, digging it in, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 this is what I've got to do. This is part of the recovery. And, um, but you know, it's not always, and I learned by listening to you, this is not always an inflammatory thing. Like, so the ice really isn't necessarily doing what you think it's doing. And the knee itself might not actually be the problem. So yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so wow. What I a good student you are. <laughs> yeah. So, well, because at this time, you know, between the half in the half marathon, I had stopped running because I was so frustrated and I just went to, you know, all the, the running podcasts I could find and typed in, in my Apple podcast app, you know, the search terms runner's knee and patellofemoral pain. Cause of course I had diagnosed myself. Um, <laughs> um, and that's, that's how I uh, found your, um, that's how I found you. You were actually being interviewed about patellofemoral pain on another podcast. And that's how I discovered your podcast. So by the time I reached out to you, I was like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. And it's not every day that, you know, your running coach is going to actually have done his doctoral dissertation on runner's knee. So <laughs> probably a reliable source. Um, and I'm not, you know, I tried reading the medical literature and I got as far as abstracts and methods. And I was like, I, no, I have to write my own dissertation. This is not, I can't do this. I love that um, you actually tried too. <laughs> oh yeah. I was deep in the ortho journals and I was like, eh. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, was yeah. Out it, totally out of my element. Yeah. If you asked me to read any of the journals that you are doing, I would be, have no clue. Right. <laughs> I would have no clue. So not only were you an adult onset runner, but you were like a COVID onset runner because like you said, there were so many runners that started taking up running uh, during the COVID years. Um, so yeah, I think many people listening to this right now may relate to you and, and your story and kind of how your runner's knee started and your knee pain is very common. Like it's, you know, pretty much textbook, um, heard it many times before, you know, just different iterations of it. It maybe didn't happen during the COVID years prior to COVID, but it is, you feel good with a lower mileage. And then you go to train for that first half marathon or that first marathon. And it's when you start running longer, you start running more and we feel good and we love the benefits of running and what it gives us. But unfortunately, if you have these kind of underlying factors that you don't know about, right. That were there and just kind of waiting for their time to kind of come out. And when you get to that certain mileage point, unfortunately, you know, you start to get some pain. Um, so yeah, I'm so glad that we found each other because, um, I know how frustrating that was for you because you wanted to kind of continue grow as a runner. And, you know, I guess just tell the listeners, like, why did you enjoy running so much since you were doing CrossFit for five years, you know, what did running do for you? that you were determined, like you were searching like medical journals on how to like <laughs> cure, you know, telephone pain syndrome. Um, why did you kind of go to those, those limits? Yeah. So, um, I, I think it's just that endorphin rush and that, that release of positive energy that you get that runner's high that you get, you know, when you return from a good run, there's really nothing that feels like it. And it's, you know, it's an opportunity to um, 
take time to yourself. That's just to yourself, right? And um, oftentimes it might be for a lot of people, it's a time to lis listen to a podcast. Uh, for me, I'm a, I'm a person who runs just without any headphones and I just, I listen to the birds and, you know, I listen to, you know, just very alert to everything around me. So, you know, I think the mental benefits were just so important. You know, I just can't stress like how, um, how much of a release of anxiety I think running provided me during, especially during those early years before the vaccine, when I had, you know, my husband working in a hospital every day, uh, my mom was living with us. She had just been diagnosed with cancer and was getting treatment. I mean, it was the whole thing, you know, and everything else, it just running, it felt like I could run away for a little while and just take that time that I needed. Um, and by the time I returned, I was a much better person. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. a much better daughter and a much better uh, spouse and a much better teacher uh, because I had taken that time and gone on a run. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, and I remember you kind of describing like the joy that, you know, running brings you and, you know, the stress relief and just that mental time. Um, I think so many of us can relate to that. Um, I couldn't agree more. And especially during that time period, right? Everyone was going through a lot of uh, stress, anxiety. Um, we didn't know what the heck was going on with our world, right? <laughs> and yeah, running was definitely something that you know, it got me through that time period, um, for sure. So, yeah, I think, and I remember when we had talked initially, when you kind of scheduled your strategy call with me and, you know, you were talking about that you were just, you know, looking to get over, you know, or looking to get back to consistent running without the fear of your knee pain coming back. And I think that's something that is common that, you know, I hear a lot and that almost makes me like somewhat sad, like that people are fearful, right? That pain's going to come back or they're just fearful that, oh, is this going to be the run that, you know, puts me on the shelf again or, you know, that I can't run. So I'm just so glad that, you know, we had spoke and you decided to kind of get some help on this. And I guess, you know, just take me into your mind at that point in time, if you could remember uh, back that far and, you know, why did you decide to kind of pull the trigger and say like, okay, enough is enough. Like I need some more guidance on this um, because many people reach out to me and, you know, not everyone decides to actually invest in their health and, you know, kind of take that next step. You know, what made you, you know, decide to, to get the guidance on, on fixing this problem? Well, I think because I'd tried so many other things on my own and I'd sort of exhausted all of the things that I was willing to do to put the time in, the research in, you know, I didn't have multiple hours a day to cobble together a specific plan, you know, that would be appropriate for my running uh, condition, my knee condition. I didn't really understand, like I sort of vaguely understood that there were other like muscle weaknesses that were contributing to my knee flaring up, but I didn't have that time. I didn't have all of those hours to put into developing a plan that would get me out of that rut. And I knew I loved running so much that I wanted to, you know, get back to it. And I knew that you and your group had put together a plan that would be customized, you know, customized to me and my specific running goals and my specific condition. Um, and so once I realized that that's what I was going to be getting out of the, you know, the investment that was, I mean, the decision was made, honestly. Yeah. Did you have any hesitations at all? I had no hesitation in terms of, you know, the expertise that you provided and that every, you know, everything I was going to be getting. I think the only hesitation I had was that, Hey, I'm not an elite runner. I'm just sort of an average, like middle of the pack, middle-aged person that just runs for fitness and fun. And, you know, does that kind of person really need a running coach? But then I thought a bit about it and I thought, well, you know, how is this different from having a personal trainer? Right. Or something like that. And I also, you know, went on your website and I saw some testimonials from people that you had helped in the past. And I realized that they were people a lot like me. <laughs> so I thought, you know, this really is kind of perfect for me. So I got over that initial hesitation pretty quickly. 
Right. Yeah. And that is something that is pretty common. Like we feel like we need to be at a certain level, you know, to, to warrant coaching or to warrant help. Um, and I just love that, you know, you got to the point that you were like, all right, I've done all I can do. <laughs> and, you know, I need some kind of guidance on this. And, and I was so glad that you did reach out because do you remember when we looked at your running form and your uh, running yes. deep videos that first time? <laughs> it was like looking at my own running with a new pair of eyes. That was the coolest moment because yeah. So you had me record videos of myself running from different angles. And at our first deep dive coaching call, we looked at them together. And that was so interesting to me to watch uh, an expert sort of dissect what was happening. I never would have been able to see with my own eyes what was happening. Like, hey, wow, my pelvis really is tilted. And wow, my, my knees, they're really caving in. And my step width is super narrow. And I, you know, I didn't have a name for that. I couldn't, and you pointed out those things and seeing my gait analysis in that way helped me understand, you know, the knee is not the main problem. You know, it's the knees just letting you know that, hey, you have some muscle weaknesses and imbalances in a lot of other places, specifically that uh, side hip muscle that I always have to think ab versus ab, abductor uh, yes. muscle, right? And, um, and I could visually see that. And I was like, oh, okay. I heard it said somewhere else that with this kind of pain, the victim cries out, but the perpetrator is silent. And the perpetrator ah, was the muscle. Yes, you know, I like the, that. He is just the victim, but the perpetrator I is like the that. other, right? Yes. <laughs> right. So um, so anyway, so I understood at that point that building strength in that area specifically and other areas too would help take the pressure off my knee and get me back to running pain-free. So yeah. major like, you know, head burst moment of like, I know. whoa. And I remember that <clears throat> I, I screenshotted uh, your your striding, and you know one of the common things initially was like that overstriding, and you know which is common in a lot of people who have that similar pain you had. And I was just so glad like we were able to do that because again you were newer in your running journey. It's been a year and a half, and this is a common pattern that I see in runners. And like, why would you know right to not overstride like it? you think you see runners and you're just like, you're doing what your body's telling you to do. But it was just so neat to be able to like visually show you that. And I, I really need to actually uh, share that uh, picture if you don't mind um, and show like the before and after that we looked at, you know, later on after the 16 weeks, because I think it's a great educational tool and just to show kind of what overstriding looks like and how you want to drive with your knee as opposed to leading with your foot. And I know we did a whole podcast episode on running form um, uh, with oh, Doug yeah. Adams, which was good. And I know you, you were you were commenting on that episode and we're like, oh, I know what I am. Oh, I <laughs> Can I be multiple right. categories? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was like a whole Venn diagram of like <laughs> gate problems. And, but once I saw that, you know, I could like figure out what the steps were, right? And it wasn't just, I mean, the strength training was huge. That was like, the cornerstone of what fixed <laughs> this problem. But then there were also little things that I could change about my form, like the cadence, increasing the cadence, I think probably helped quite a bit to correct mm -hmm. the overstriding. So yeah, I just loved seeing cause and effect and being able to tweak little things that really did address the problem. Yeah. So because when we started working together, uh, I certainly remember this. I don't know if you do, I'm sure you do, but you know, it's not like after a week or two, you were like pain free. And, you know, it's not that you weren't having any pain. So, well, I guess, can you share, you know, what were some of the things you noticed right away um, that were helping and working well, where you were kind of said in your head, like, okay, maybe there's something to this. Maybe we're right on, maybe we're on the right track and or did you doubt if we were on the right track at all? No, because like I said, I think looking at that, uh, the running gait analysis videos really justified why we were doing the strength training exercises that you specifically picked for me. So I understood like that was the motivation was there. 
and you started me out three times a week and you started me off from the basic restoration phase, you know? So I had to put my ego aside and say like, you know, I might be used to doing a little bit more weightlifting, but these are specific exercises that are going to strengthen you for running specifically and correct your knee weakness or knee pain specifically. Right. So I just had to trust that. And I followed to a T, right. I think, I don't think I ever skipped any strength training or anything like that. Um, and you know, the knee, the knee pain did improve, but it is important. I think, like you said, for people to understand that it's not just like a, you know, a light switch, like all of a sudden it was gone. Um, and it's not even like a straight line where like the next today is always better than yesterday. Right. So it kind of like is, the general trend is improve. And I think there were a couple of times, like in the first four to six weeks, I would say timeframe where the knee pain would crop up and I'd send you a text and say, eh, is this normal? I thought I was getting better, but, and you know, you really gave me a good way of framing it and thinking about the level of the pain, the duration of the pain. And it was giving, it was that confidence that you gave me to say, okay, well, you know, if the pain is much above a three or four, I would be surprised or something like that, a three or four out of 10. And sure enough, you were right. I completed the run and the pain, the pain dissipated very quickly after I was done running, usually within an hour of stopping the run. Um, you know, so by about seven or eight weeks into our 16 weeks together, I would say the pain was completely gone. So yeah. And I, I think that's a huge, huge point because I think what most runners do with this condition is they feel pain and they're like, oh, it must be the running I'm doing, or it must be the step up exercise I'm doing, or these exercises can't be good for me. Maybe I should stop. And it does require that fine tuning of like exactly what you're doing. And even some of those exercises, I remember we had a fine tune technique wise, where you put the stress, are you pushing through your heel or you're pushing through the ball of your toe? Right. And there are different variations. And this is where, you know, if someone has this condition and you're working with some, this is where working with someone to provide some guidance, like a running physical therapist, right. Can help you get over this to be able to strengthen the muscles that Lindsay's talking about that are really important um, without increasing pain. And then the other point I think is really important to note is yes, it is normal as you progress in your running, and we're running more miles per week because kind of, you know, Lindsay didn't mention this, but when we started out, we were doing three days of running, then we progressed sort of four days of running. And I do find that people who are running more frequently throughout the week actually wind up allowing their bodies to adapt to the demands of running and their pain levels go down. But I remember kind of that transition phase and, or when we got the double digit long run transition phase, mm -hmm. right? There was these little spikes where in final surge. So for those listening, we use final surge as our kind of platform um, where we kind of provide the structured run plan and the strengthening exercise. And, you know, Lindsay had commented in there that, oh, I had some pain that came back and that's kind of weird. Cause like she was pain free for weeks, right? She thought she was kind of behind this. And those things are normal when you have changes in training or you progress in your exercises where you can have this pain, but the key, and what I love about you, Lindsay, is that, you know, we, we kind of explained to you why you're feeling this, right? And we kind of made some adjustments and or encouraged you to continue going because sometimes people feel that pain and then they just back off or they stop running for like three or four days, mm -hmm. which with this condition, especially, this is not the type of condition where you really have to honestly ever stop running. I almost, you never say ever, right? I actually have had someone who currently has this problem where the level of irritability was so high where like you described before, after that trail run, where the knee bending was super painful, pain levels are like, you know, six, seven, eight out of 10, then yes, you might need to actually stop running. But the majority of people who have this type of pain that you talked about, um, runner's knee, most times it's rare that I ever have anyone stop running. Um, you just need to modify and then, you know, develop a plan to address the causative factors to why this is actually occurring. Um, so I think that that's an important point that you brought up is that it's not all just kind of, you go from, 
you know, not having, having pain to like not having pain. And then you never have pain ever again. It is this process and you could have some pain that returns, but it doesn't last. Like you said, it goes away and it's not anything that, you know, for those listening, I don't want you to be fearful when that happens, because I think that's a, a common mistake is that runners get fearful that they're going to go back to where they were in the beginning. And then they stop actually doing the runs, which allows your body to adapt to the demands of running. They stop doing the exercises, which are going to be the key at actually getting over this condition. Um, so I love how you are very receptive to my feedback and you, you trusted the process, right? You like trusted, you're like, okay, all right. I, I just want to make sure yeah. I was getting a little worried and I hear you and you were like, you were great. You're like, I'll let you know, you know, how it feels tomorrow's run, or I'll let you know how it feels in two days. I'll let you know how it feels for the long run. And you were great about providing that feedback. So I think that was an important point, um, that you, that you kind of, uh, you mentioned there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my instinct with on my own devices would be just to, like you said, just pull back or just stop for a couple of days, but just having you there kind of to talk me through what to expect and to have things kind of go exactly as you predicted was really reassuring. And now I have sort of the knowledge to, you know, if, and when that happens again, as it might, if I decide to run a marathon someday and increase my training load, I'll know what's within normal and what's, mm -hmm. what's maybe not. Right. So yeah, that was a huge, just getting that knowledge was a really big gain from the program as well. Exactly. And even, you know, you talked about your ice pack before, right? So like <laughs> most runners will kind of resort back to that, right? And they'll be like, oh, maybe I need to ice and elevate my knee after every single run. And with this condition, it really is not necessary whatsoever. Like the ice could, it will mask pain. So it will make you feel numb and take away pain blocks, you know, pain from being perceived by the brain, but it's not treating any condition, um, with this problem, uh, in particular. Um, so I think you did a great job of kind of painting the picture of like, you know, pre healthy runner coaching, right? Like where you were at now, let's talk about like after our 16 weeks of working together, um, you know, the, if that was like part one, this is like part two, right. And, you know, where were you by the end of us working together? You know, what did your running look like? Um, were you having any pain? What did, you know, life look like for you then? Yeah. So the really, exciting part was that at the end of our 16 weeks together, I, you know, ran my second half marathon here in Texas. Actually, it was in North Texas um, on April 30th. And, um, you know, I went into it just as, you know, thinking no matter what happens, like this is a celebration of the work that I've put in and a celebration of my training. And um, it ended up being a great experience because I did run the race totally pain-free, which is great. Um, and, and that was really my main goal. I told you going into that, I was like, my A goal is just finish this race without knee pain. And, and we got there, mm -hmm. no knee pain. During the race. Yep. And then, um, yeah. And then you actually, when you were coming up with my pacing strategy, you gave me kind of like a theoretical, like, I think you can meet this time. And I was like, Oh man, I don't know if I could do that. But, um, <laughs> even though it was like, pretty hot and humid that day. Um, I, I pushed it and I made it, I made my PR. I made that, um, below the goal that you had set, um, which is, uh, by a few seconds. And I think it was like almost a five minute PR. So like best of both worlds. Cause I, you know, was able to reach both of those goals. So really could not have been a better day. And I also want to give a shout out too, because part of spark is, um, you know, getting, uh, gleaning insights from Brooke, the healthy runner nutritionist and also the other coaches in the program. And, you know, they shared a lot of knowledge um, with me as well. And so going into that half marathon, not only did I have, you know, the kind of the fruits of like what you and I had done together, but also I had the nutrition dialed in. I had the hydration dialed in. I knew that I wasn't going to just sit down on my butt immediately after crossing the finish line. Like I understood there were things to do to recover from a race that, as a novice, I just had no idea. Right. And so all those recovery strategies, like I had this whole toolbox of stuff that I just felt like, okay, I'm a runner now. Like I know how this works <laughs> and I'm not just yes. on the fly, you know? So 
um, yeah, it was a really, it was a really proud moment. I was really proud of the way that race went. I know. I'm just so proud of you because you were like, literally like the perfect student, right? Like you <laughs> followed everything we talked about. You followed the racing plan. I remember you like studied our, our race day blueprint, right? That we kind of produced right when oh, you were cool. going through your race. We put that together, that um, PDF. We've done the episode with coach Whitney. And I remember, you know, you were one of the first people who actually like applied it to preparing for the race. Yeah. And you that just was like, cool. and I printed one out for my friend. Like I gave it to her and I'm like, awesome. you me later, you know, and, um, <laughs> and we had, we didn't miss anything. We packed everything we needed. Um, so yeah, yeah. Blueprint yeah. So that, excellent. yeah, that race day blueprint for those that don't know, we really structured everything out for kind of all the considerations, how to plan for your race day. Um, even days before the day of, we give you a checklist. Um, so we have a whole resource um, document and I'll definitely link that to this video um, and podcast episode uh, for those of you who are, are listening to this. That's been super helpful. And I just love how you, you just really like took action and implemented like everything right away. Like you, it must've been like drinking from fire hose, but like you, everything from like Brooke and nutrition wise, you just like took it in and implemented it, like took action. Like you weren't just like, okay, I'm going to listen to this. And yeah, that's nice to know. Maybe I'll do that in the future or, Hey, like, cause there's people who just like to learn and listen, but they don't like to implement. Right. And you really took action. And I just love that everything like aligned, like you were able to run that half marathon without, you know, the pain that you were feeling back in December, um, before we started working together. And not only that, but you actually performed better, right? You actually ran faster <laughs> than you did last time around and you felt stronger, right? And yeah. you felt like your nutrition was on yeah. track. And like, I just love how you've already embraced like that you are a runner already. Like most of us don't actually call ourselves runners until we've been doing it. Like, I think it was like four or five years that I was running where I finally was oh, like, I see. I okay, to I'm a runner. <laughs> I listened to Coach Whitney and Coach Whitney says, if you run, you're a runner. So I took that to heart and I listened to her talk about that. So I'm owning it now. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. And what would you say, um, you know, how has this really impacted, you know, your life and, you know, getting to be able to run this half marathon um, faster than last time without knee pain, you know, and what other ways has that impacted you? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's, you know, been like the biggest return on investment because I'm doing what I love to do and I'm not thinking about that. I'm hurting, you know, and running, it can be for me what it always has been, which is an, an escape time to myself, you know, uh, you know, physical activity. Um, and I've decided to stay on in your longevity program and work with coach Whitney toward a new goal. So I have my next goal race on the books and she is using her expertise to guide me with, um, adding speed work and speed training. Um, so I'm really excited to learn from her and become a more efficient runner and, um, even potentially chop off some more time off my next half marathon. So, um, yeah, I'm just really happy and really grateful, uh, to be able to run regularly. Uh, and I never take any run for granted. Every run is a gift. Um, and I'm absolutely a believer in strength training and will never skip a strength training workout. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it you know? So yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, um, you know, for those that don't know if, if, you know, someone, when they start in our program, if they have the level of pain that Lindsay had, then they're most appropriate for working with myself, right. As you're running physical therapist and coach to kind of get you back and combine your run plan, your strength plan, and the rehab specific exercises that are actually going to get this condition better. Um, but, yeah. After we get you out of pain, it's like, that's what we have our healthy runner coaching team for. Right. And depending upon what your running goals are, there are some that, you know, are let's say time of the year, either it's like dead winter or it's even dead summer in like Texas, right. Um, where you need to run on a treadmill. It's like, Hey, we got our treadmill running specialist coach cat. Like 
she is going to help you, you know, be able to progress in your running and keep it fun and be able to give you like workouts you can do on the treadmill. Right. Or if you're like, you know, looking to qualify for Boston, it's like, okay, we got coach Lou, like he's done it before. He's done Boston twice before he's sub three marathon or like, he's going to help you better than I can help you get that goal. Right. Or we have coach Whitney, right? Like in your case, it was like, I knew coach Whitney was going to be a great fit for you. Um, nutrition wise, adding in some speed work. Um, and then, you know, we have coach Latoya, like mindset wise, I just love. So these are really the team that we have, you know, within our program. And like you mentioned, Brooke, um, being able to take care of the nutritional, you know, questions and field, you know, in within our program that I just love. And I just love being able to see others like yourself, um, take that next step and not just, okay, run pain free. And then, Hey, figure out the rest on your own. Like, good luck. Right. Like, yeah. see you later. Like, I just love continuing this relationship and like seeing that growth. Um, and like, I can't wait to see you run your race in August. And even though you and I aren't going to be working together one-on-one -on, -one on a daily basis, and I'm not seeing your runs in final surge and commenting it's coach Whitney, who is still, it's like great for me to see, you know, your progress still and like getting to that next level. And I just love seeing that in people that I've worked with, now, you know, that are like in our community, like I'm thinking of Owen who just like, you know, crushed his half marathon and, you know, same thing. It was like, when we finished up, you know, I wasn't at the point with him to see him actually accomplish that redemption half marathon, but coach cat was right. And I just love being able to, you know, see that end result. And not only because you know, initially when I started this as like a physical therapist, it was, you know, you see someone runners knee in the clinic and yeah, we make them feel better. And then usually you discharge from PT and you're like, good luck, go back to running. Right. Yeah. And I knew when I started my, my brick and mortar practice in the beginning before COVID, um, it was, I was going to do things different. It was like, I was going to help with the run aspect and actually like guide someone back to running and getting pain-free. And now it's like at just a whole different level with, you know, becoming a run coach myself and, you know, being able to like program out, structure it out and then, okay, let's get to this marathon. Let's get to this half marathon without pain. Awesome. And now it's kind of like, let's continue that relationship of, you know, lifelong injury-free running. And how do you want to get stronger? How do you want to get faster? And you know what? We have a team for that. Like, and I will set you up with the person that's best for you. Um, so I just love that you have invest, continue to invest in not only your health initially, but really your future physical and mental well-being, right? And being able to continue doing, you know, what you love, like you had mentioned before, and realize that, hey, if I want to get to this place and I don't want to actually have to be sidelined with injuries and just struggle with the next injury, you know, there's a way to go about it. And that's what our coaching team, you know, specializes in. So yeah, we're super excited to have you in our longevity program. And I'm glad that it's going um, awesome with coach Whitney so far. Um, and I can't yeah. wait to see you run that uh, half marathon um, in August. They're 31. Yes, in August in San Antonio, Texas, it's called Dragon's Den uh, appropriately because apparently it's like running through fire <laughs> because of the heat. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, uh, Whitney also is a hot weather runner, right? Because she lives in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So she's, uh, that's another aspect of her experience that she can bring to the training plan. And I love that. Absolutely. And if there was anyone out there that was like on the fence about healthy runner coaching, um, any advice or recommendations you can give them? Um, I would just say, go for it. You're honestly, you could not be in better hands, more expert hands and what you get will be customized to you, uh, your condition and your goals. Um, but you absolutely have to show up every day and put in the work, you know, you have to get, get up and get it done. Right. Um, and if you love running enough, then you will. Right. Yeah. We, we can't actually get the runs in for you or actually do the exercises for you. We'll provide you like the structure, the support, you know, the videos, and, um, we'll keep you motivated along the way. We, we can't actually do it for you. Right. Exactly. And <laughs> yeah. You did you get it that will to the will to do it. And, um, 
you know, I, th- I have a feeling that most people who reach out to you are going to have a strong will to run. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, there, there might be someone out there who's like just in the beginning and you're like, you totally know, like, Hey, like I'm not ready to do coaching, whatever. Like we have a free resource for you as well. And I think you had saw this resource, um, in the beginning, um, you know, we do have like an ebook on runner's knee. So for those that, you know, just know right now, Hey, I want to start to learn some things on my own. Like I put together a resource. So wherever you're watching this video in the comment box, if you type runner, I will shoot you our free ebook, um, which has some videos and, you know, general guidelines and how to overcome runner's knee. And again, it, it, it's meant for the average, right? So you're, you're kind of, I put this document together of the mean of runners. Um, so going to those averages and what are the, the things that has worked for most runners? It might not work for you in your particular situation, but you're going to definitely be able to get some content that's backed up by evidence. Um, and you know, we'll kind of get you on the right path. Um, but if you are struggling at kind of getting back into running, you were like Lindsay and you've been trying everything on your own and you're doubting whether or not, you know, you actually should be a runner or you're too scared to actually run. Um, you know, my question to you is honestly, you know, or are you ready to take control, um, of your health? Like Lindsay was and get back to running. Um, or, you know, you've just been told like, maybe you shouldn't be a runner or running is bad for your knees. Um, I'm here to tell you it is certainly not bad for your knees. So let's just bust that myth right away. Um, and if you are ready to invest and you know, you're like, yes, 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 I'm ready. Like I would be honored to guide you back to getting back on the pavement, doing what you love. Like Lindsay was, um, you know, in our coaching program that we kind of described is, you know, we're going to be with you every step of the way, like our whole team that we've talked about to really provide structure, support, accountability. Um, so if you want to see if you're a good fit for our program, then schedule your strategy call with me. Like I had one with Lindsay, um, today and really, you know, grab one of the remaining slots on my calendar. So you, you can conquer, um, your running goal or your big race on your calendar. Um, and you can simply schedule that call by just going to my calendar at learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com forward slash coaching. Um, and as we kind of wrap up here, Lindsay, you know, the final stretch you're coming down, to the, the final, uh, 0.1 mile of your half marathon, you know, um, you're coming down the stretch, you see that finish line, just like you see that finish line in your dissertation coming up soon. Um, if you can change like one thing about the misconception about getting over knee pain or getting over runner's knee, um, you know, like you had, what would that be? Well, it's an, I would say that it's definitely a misconception that runner's knee means that you have a bad knee, you're too old to run, running just isn't for you, time to hang up the sneakers. No, no. Um, you know, if you, if you execute it in a smart way, you can absolutely keep running and runner's knee is no reason to, to stop. Very well said. I couldn't even say it any better. And I love that you called it sneakers, by the way, because that's how I grew up and knew them as sneakers. No, well, you know, seriously. But I most people call them shoes, I guess. Yeah. Did I ever tell Wait, you I grew up, up in, in No, West seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But close to oh, Buffalo. Okay. I grew up in Jamestown. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's like upstate. We don't call that New York. That's like <laughs> up upstate New York. Yeah, us yeah, Long Islanders. Right. <laughs> we say pop instead of soda. So... <laughs> Yeah. It's uh, interesting sneakers. I like it. That's how I grew up. And now I say shoes because everyone else apparently in the running community calls it running shoes. Um, so Lindsay, yeah. Thank you so much, honestly, uh, for sharing your story with our community. Um, I think, you know, others are going to learn a lot, honestly, n- not from what I said, but from what you said, because you're like the person who is in that situation that they're probably, you know, battling um, with, so I appreciate you like taking the time out. Like you said, you're busy, like finishing up dissertation, you're teaching, like you got stuff on your plate. Um, so thank you so much for taking your time, uh, to share your story with us today. Absolutely. It's been a real pleasure and I really can't thank you guys enough for, you know, getting me to where I am and, um, helping me back to running again. 
Yeah, you're welcome. It's been our pleasure for sure. And we just love having you in our community. And if you guys who are listening to this, if you're listening, you know, the video version or on the podcast, and you found this helpful, then you'll definitely want to learn what causes knee pain in runners and how to avoid five common exercises or five common mistakes um, by queuing up episode 111 on the Healthy Runner podcast or clicking the next video attached to this video. Um, so now let's stay active, let's stay healthy, and let's just keep on running until next time.